Good evening and welcome back to another episode of the Knights Pub broadcasting to you live from www.thenightspub.net or you can step on over to shoutcast.com go into the search uh, bar type in the Knights Pub and that will bring you to our streaming uh, our, our live stream guys just wanted to say thank you for joining us this evening as we gear up to have our very special guest on Marty Stalker who um actually created the hostage of the devil documentary and we are very excited to have him coming on the air uh, this evening but just want to take a few moments and uh, catch up and see what's going on wanted to thank uh mr peter gershiker with positively dark for the opening and closing uh music that we use here on the show um we have uh mr gershiker has a uh, is a very nice guy has given us uh you know the thumbs up to use his music and i just wanted to get a plug in there just to let you know that um you know, uh, that we appreciate it. And also uh, Google Positively Dark. He has great music that could be used for free. He only asked that if you do use it to uh, mention them. It's the only the right thing to do. Um, Guys, just um, wanted to uh, catch up with a few things here. Um, You know, we're uh, glad that Mr. Uh, Stalker is coming on here. Uh, it's calling for some bad weather here in the Midwest. And um, you know how that goes here. Um you know, we usually have power fluctuations or loss of uh, network or something. So hopefully, fingers crossed, we will proceed on and uh, be okay and good to go. Um, speaking of network, the old Knights Pub got a uh, upgrade of the network here. So we are streaming uh, pretty quickly now. And without... Uh, we don't have to really worry about when our media servers fill up with listeners, uh, live listeners, um, about any kind of you know, degrade in the network or, you know, people falling off or whatever. So just wanted to say that we were excited about that. And speaking of uh, live broadcast, if you're listening to this right now, right at this moment, uh, February 10th at 7.06 p.m., you are listening to a live broadcast. Any other time you're listening to either a rebroadcast or or, or one of the uh, shows uh, that we put up, uh, once we're done with the show you can catch this and download it uh, here at the night's pub or you can catch us on itunes spreaker soundcloud youtube and podomatic now we also and i know i've mentioned this um a few shows ago but we were starting to turn uh to switch gears and we're starting to use google hangouts a lot and you can uh, reach the night's pub at the night's pub at gmail.net we've had a few messages shot through there and also a few phone calls and uh, just want to say thank you for those. Uh, the show number is 636-362-4211. Now, usually we we accept and we take live calls uh, when we have our guests. But since um, Mr. Stalker is um, all the way from Ireland, his time is very valuable. And um, so we're going to forego taking live phone calls. But if you have any questions or anything, please feel free to uh, drop us a line here at the Knights Pub. Also, we got the chatting module fixed on the website, and you can live chat here at the knightspub.chatbro.com. Uh, have a lot of fun. Actually, chatted with uh, a few listeners uh, while we were uh, uh, playing around and fixing things. So, you know, uh, had a lot of fun. was 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 a good time. Um, also, if you want to become a guest on the Knights Pub please stop by the show schedule page, download a PDF, and check us out. Pretty friendly people here. And I'm not just saying that because, uh, you know, uh, you know, I kind of DJ the show here or, or uh, you know, the voice of the show. But we're a very laid-back show, and I believe that's why our guests like coming on here because we give them the opportunity to talk about, you know, what they've written about or their experiences and stuff. Because to be honest with you, uh, other than just getting on the show and, you know, saying a few things, I am very interested in what people have to say, especially when it deals with topics such as what Mr. Uh, Starker will be speaking about this evening. Um, so I want to apologize about last week with our, uh, purported interview with Mr. Daniel Jones with the Church of Jediism. Uh, he had some severe network issues and he couldn't get out and couldn't call out or anything and... Um, you know, we tried to reach out to him several times, uh, since then to try to get him to come back on air. And there's just been kind of, uh, you know, more or less email tags. And, uh, you know, his book came into the, um, to the studio here, uh, become the force nine lessons on how to live as a Jedi, a Jediist master. 
And, um, I mean, just thumbing through it, it looks like really good uh, material. So once we hear back from him and we can get him on, we would love to have him back on because, I mean, of course, you know, myself and Brother Jan, or Brother Brother Jan, Brother Stan, uh, you know, big Jedi uh, fans. Speaking of the good brother, I uh, just spoke with him a little while ago while I was out uh, cooking dinner, uh, chatted with him a little bit, and I'm going to catch up with him a little bit more here after the show and see how he's doing. And uh, it's always good to talk to Brother Stan. Uh, by the way, he sends his regards. I uh, hope so everyone is doing well and, um, you know, looking forward to getting back on the show. Uh, but since we missed Mr. Jones last Saturday, earlier that day, myself and Brother Stan recorded a show, and that is up not, o- not only on the w- website, but also uh, up on iTunes. So, but uh, so next week we're going to have Miss Marie Jones, author of Demons, the Devil and Fallen Angels on the air. Looking forward to having her on. Um, you know, I have her book, read her book, and it's uh, really spine tingling. I mean, there's a lot of information that went into that book. So looking forward to have her on. Um, but um, other than that, my friends, I tell you what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and we're going to go to break. And we're going to reach out to Mr. Uh, Stalker here, get him on uh, the air. And then when we come back, we'll have him on. So sit back, relax, enjoy the music, and we'll be right back. Thank you. 
Welcome back, everybody, to the Knights Pub. Catch the live broadcast here at www.thenightspub.net. There's a little radio icon up at the top of the page. Just press play. That does take you right into our live stream here in the studio. And also catch us on shoutcast.com. Um, just search for the Knights Pub. That will also bring you to our live stream feed. Hostage to the Devil is the first documentary ever produced about Father Malachi Martin, an exorcist and Jesuit priest. Although the topic of exorcisms has been controversial in the past, recently the subjects of possessions, exorcisms, and the devil seem to have infiltrated into the very core of our society. Marty Stalker is a film and television director. His debut featured documentary, Hostage to the Devil, which was supported by the Irish Film Board and Northern Ireland Screen, was released on Netflix worldwide in 2017. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I'd like to welcome Mr. Marty Stalker to the Night's Pub. Uh, good evening. Well, I just wanted to say, uh, once again, thank you for joining us here on the Night's Pub. Um, your documentary, as we were discussing a little bit before you came on, is um, w very well done. I mean, it is an incredible documentary that covered the life of uh, Father Malachi Martin and um, just the controversy that surrounded his his life and the things that he was doing for people. I mean, it, you captured it very well. I mean, very well done. Oh, thank you very much. It was um, Personally, it was a five-year journey for me. I was, um, and, and my wife as well. <laughs> she had to, she had to sort of um, listen to the interviews and um, the audio with me as well. I'd, I'd sometimes fall asleep in bed listening to Father Martin's interviews with Arbel on the Coast to Coast show in the '90s. So, um, no, so she's she, she's been through as well. She actually came up with a great idea actually for the for the Blu-ray release uh, of the of the film is to actually put a director's wife's commentary over the film because <laughs> because she's uh, she's been through this just as just as long as I have. So uh, yeah, it was a five year a five year process, but. And, and and whoever, I mean, anybody who's seen the film, you know, we're only scratching the surface. You know, we're only scratching 5% of this guy, this, this man's life, incredible man's life. And, and he was controversial, you know, and he was an absolute joy from a storyteller's point of view and a filmmaker's point of view. He, he was an absolute joy to to research and to and to put the jigsaw together. And and, and, and like I said before, we we only we only scratch the surface. I mean, I, I could have made five documentaries about this man's life, um, but we, we chose his, his underground exorcism ministry purely because, well, one, we knew exorcism was a, still a hot topic in the entertainment industry at the moment, and um, two, it's just a fascinating subject matter. And the dilemma that I faced was, um, I'm making a factual documentary here, you know, how, I, you, you can't go sensational with it. it, it it's, you, you're, you're supposed to be presenting an objective look on a subject matter. So... People, you know, the film has, you know, has been heavily criticised. It, it is the nature of the beast, you know, no pun intended, but it is the nature of the beast, you know, with, with filmmaking, you know, you're going to make something which is liked and which is hated by, by many. And, and just like Father Martin himself, you know, he was like, you know, he, he was loved and he was hated by, you know, by many. So the film, the film for me is a, it's like a mirror image of that. It's, it, it's people either love the film, like the film or they hate the film and think it's, you know, it, it's, it's. You know, they've wasted a ninety minutes of their life, but that's 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 the nature of the beast. So, it was just a it was an absolute joy to research. You know, it, it took five years to make, but for me, the it took three and a half years to research to actually try and find proof of a lot of these allegations, a lot of these stories, a lot of these sensational episodes in his life. And it was it, it took me a long time to actually find fact and. Um, I soon realized about a year and a half into the research phase and the development phase that I needed to stay away from the internet. The internet was just rabbit hole after rabbit hole of, of just subjective um, nonsense and conspiracy theory. So I actually started picking up the telephone and calling his his friends, his his critics, and actually speaking to people, you know, face to face and over the telephone or via Skype. So that's when things started to really happen for me from a from a story point of view, is I actually could speak to people who actually met the man in person and um you know you obviously i spoke to a lot of people who had never met the man but they, they had very strong feelings about him but for me it was important to actually contact and and, and to speak to real live people who who, who he had touched and uh, you know who, who had made an impact in their lives as well so yeah it was it was just a incredible journey for me now, Marty, you have a great uh, CV and experience in directing films such as To Lose Control, The yep. Ash, Safe Haven, and A Director Prepares. Now, yep. with, with those types of films, how were you approached to film uh, a documentary about Father Malachi Martin? I, th I think it was, I, I'd done a lot about sort of 10 years ago, I'd started to do a lot of genre stuff. A lot, I mean, to be honest with you, fictional narrative 
um, films are a lot easier than factual. You know, factual takes long a long time to research and develop and to, and to find the contributors and subject, etc. It's you know, with, with with narrative filmmaking, the script already wrote. You know, okay, there's a few polish polishes to be done, but the script already wrote. You know, and but with with documentary work, you've got to get out there and do the research yourself. No one's going to do it for you. So. Um, unless you can pay the researchers to do it, but it's literally, um, it, it's it's an absolute, oh, the dog's barking. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I was doing a lot of genre, a lot of short films in, in the horror genre at the time, and uh, two two producers from Ireland contacted me and said that, um, yeah, they were looking to, first of all, they were looking to um, make a feature film about the man, but they knew that um, we can't really make a feature film about the man who nobody else has really heard of. You know, I know Father Martin Scott has, has got his supporters and his critics, but that's still a very small population of the world. So it's for film producers to make a feature, feature film about um, a, a person that nobody's really heard about, then that was quite dangerous and risky. So they actually approached me to do a documentary um, about the man. And, and to be honest, I, I don't really pigeonhole myself. I'm a storyteller. And if that's in factual work or narrative work, then that's what it is. You know, music videos, TV commercials, whatever it is. And I'm a storyteller by heart. So that can be, and you know, there's, there's no point in me in such early, early stage of my career to, to, to pigeonhole myself into one category. You know, I'm, I'm happy to tell a story in, in any, in any um, form. So yeah, so they, they approached me and then they, they brought over the, uh, the JCB truck and dropped all the paperwork off. And, you know, it was just like trawling through all this research. And I was like, the first thing that came to my head was how come nothing's been made about this man before, you know, he died in 99. And, uh, I just couldn't believe like I am, you know, I am now going to be making the first, you know, piece. I know there's a lot of YouTube videos put together by, you know, by, by fans and critics, etc. but it literally is, um, the first time, you know, people are going to see see this man and, and to hear his story. I mean, I'm talking globally now. I'm not, I'm not, not talking, uh, you know, just just via his YouTube, uh, the YouTube channels, etc. So, yeah, it was, it was, it was, yeah, it was. From day one, it was just a, it, it was a challenge, and and um, and it was a very long journey as well. Now, Father Malachi Martin became famous on certain secular shows uh, here in the United States, especially one of which was Art Bell show and um, yeah. that's how we at the night's pub heard of him a long time ago and we just followed him up into yeah. um, his unfortunate death um, <clears throat> however there are still many people that do not know him especially here in the united states uh, yeah. uh because he dealt with with the topic uh that was controversial and and many thought to be skeptical who who was father malachi martin so to me personally um i he, he's he's still He's still an enigma. He's he's still wrapped up in mystery. It's it's it took it's five years out of my life. Um, I, you know, researching the man, and, and he's still for me he's still a mystery. And that and that's how he would have liked to be to be to be left to be left as well, and to be and to be you know his, the explanation for for him is he he was an absolute mystery, and um, he had his flaws, and, and he would always I know for he had no he never came across somebody who had an ego. Um, you know, he had humility and, and, ju- and, and he was very, very passionate about his beliefs from day one. He, he, he never, you know, that, that he never swayed about those traditional, you know, he was a traditional Catholic uh, by heart and, and, and he, and he died with those, um, you know, with the same beliefs. That's why he is controversial. But, um, for me, he was somebody who really had an effect on people's lives. He was the first of his kind to use media, to use communication, to use radio and television to communicate a message that was unheard of. You know, a, a, a priest or a former priest, whoever, whatever you want to sort of side you want to take on this, he, he was the first of his kind to, to, to really exploit that and to send a message um, across to people's living rooms through radios, through car radios, through television sets. And it was, it was unheard of at the time, and, and he utilized that to his advantage. And he was a great writer. He sold a lot of books uh, at the same time. So, um, yeah, he, you know, you know if, if you want to go back to his early days, you know, uh, you know, a young clerical Indiana Jones, you know, on his belly, you know, on the Dead Sea Scrolls, you know, archaeologist and ended up in New York after Vatican II. He just, you know, it, it, I mean, everyone knows Father Mal- Malachi Martin. I'm not going to I'm not going to riff off um, his, his history here, but uh, everyone who, who listens to this show will know, will know him inside out. But he was just um, absolutely fascinating. So how difficult was it with your research to verify this um, information on Father Malachi's life as an exorcist, especially from the Vatican? Were they very cooperative or no? 
No, the the Vatican was more locked down than the CIA were. So um, yeah, so they they it took me three years to get official correspondence from the Jesuits. Um, I, I had a list of questions that I wanted them to, you know, you know, kindly answer for me because it was important because um, this is a the, the main protagonist of the film. So I wanted to, um, to 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 really, you know, get these facts nailed down. And that took three years to get official correspondence from the Jesuits who 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 would, would be able who were ki- who kindly answered the questions on my behalf and which are addressed in the film and and uh, yeah, but the Vatican, no, um, yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, no, nothing from the Vatican at all. Um, you know, so but the Jesuits took it, it took three years, but they kindly um, answered my uh, my questions. And also, there was there was a story about, for example, that, which didn't make the cut of the film, unfortunately. But there was a story about uh, Father Martin visiting um, David Berkowitz in 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 jail in the late seventies. Um, and you know, I, I I contacted the prison, and you know, all I wa- all I wanted was that signing signing information of you know Malachi Martin signed in on this day. You know, all I wanted was that, but. I, Apparently they, they they don't keep records that that late back. So there was stuff like that which which was really disappointing because there was there was there was there was great moments in the film which had to be cut because you know I, I'm responsible for what I'm delivering on screen and I I, I would have loved to have gone down the David Berkowitz angle but uh, I just couldn't prove it and it was uh, you know I just I, I I just couldn't do it you know I I couldn't leave it in the film because I just couldn't prove that he actually you know made made that you know connection with David Berkowitz in jail but you know there's stuff like that which is very frustrating in the in, in the whole process and uh, at the end of the day you know you, you haven't got very long to to introduce a, a character on screen and to, and to go through his life you know and, and like I said before we only scratched the surface but I could have made you know five six documentaries about this man you know particularly his his, his work in the Vatican during Vatican II and and also you know Windswept House was one, was one of my favorite favorite uh, of his books as well so you know it was just it just had to be disciplined in a sense that right this is what we need to stick to this is what we can prove and this is what we have to deliver and we we, we can deliver within the budget and the time frame so um, as, as, as a filmmaker as long as you walk away from a film and this is my first film this is my first feature 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 length project and as long as you walk away from that edit suite and you've done your best with the money and the time frame and uh, and you're proud of it then and you're personally proud of it as a, as a storyteller stroke filmmaker then uh, that's that that's the important thing you know you're never going to make a film which is loved by everybody and you know and I, I, I'm you know I get criticized of why you know why didn't you why didn't you talk more about this about my father Martin and this and this and well to be honest you know I, I can only present the stuff that I could prove and you know, considering it took me three years to get official correspondence from the Jesuits, it, it, it explains it all. So it was very, it was frustrating, but it was also a rewarding experience as well. And 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 for me, as from a first film um, to be picked up by Netflix uh, worldwide, it was it was a dream come true, really. Now, the Jesuit order in Ireland, uh, to my understanding, yes. forbade you. Uh, well, it was forbidden you to make the documentary. Why? Yes. Um, they didn't give the reasons, but the Paddy Paddy McCartney, one of the producers on the film, uh, was 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 told it must have been about seven years ago now that um, it's quite a funny story actually. The, the, the two the two film producers, Chris Patterson and Paddy McCartney, were in a were in a pub in Dublin of all places, and they actually um, they were approached by a, a priest who came over and um, o- had overheard them talking about being film producers and. And just said, just 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 said across the table, you just mentioned the fact that you should make, you should really consider making a film about Father Maliki Martin. He's, he, you know, do do you do some research and see what you think. And he and, he, and the priest just left the bar and it was never seen again. And and then, as 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 Paddy McCartney was, uh, Paddy and Chris were starting to um, research more and, and and to contact the Jesuits, etc. Uh, one of the Jesuits um, yeah, officials just turned around to him and said, "You will not be allowed to make this film." And when I heard this, it made me want to make it even more. So um, I'm, I'm, I, I like challenges. So um, yeah, so uh, they it, it didn't give an explanation for it. They just, they just, um, hence, hence why it probably, hence why it took three years to get official correspondence from, from the Jesuits in Ireland. But um, no, but yeah. So I, I, to this day, I have no idea what they meant from that comment. Did you find it difficult when you were um, doing your research? Uh, to because it, in the documentary itself, you you talked to both supporters and critics of Father Kai Martin. How easy were they to interview? I mean, uh, were they willing to come on? Um, was there kind of any caveats to where there are certain things they didn't want to speak about, or or was it just like yeah. an, op- an open an open forum? 
Well, for me, it was um, it, his 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 critics were hard to find. I mean, they were very very vocal online. They're very vocal in articles and, but you know, on the telephone, they when I spoke to them, they they were they wouldn't want to come on camera. And the only one who would want who who, who did want to come on camera was uh, Bob Kaiser. Um, who we all know uh, from the film, he, he wrote *Clerical Error*, and he was a former Jesuit as well. So he he was the only one who was willing to come on come on camera, and, and you know it, it's incredible because yeah he he's he's got a you know he's got stories about the man and um and you know I, I'm trying to be objective here as, as a storyteller, and you know and my, one of my other criticisms of the film is I'm, I'm extremely I, I do come across as extremely subjective about Father Martin, but. Uh, you, as a as a filmmaker, you, as a documentary maker, you just you can't remain objective all the way through. You you you, you, you do slip you do slip here and there and and and, and towards the end, I'm, I'm presuming audiences will, will understand that you know I, I I am a believer in, in in the subject matter that we were covering in the film and you know and and I was a believer in Father Martin as well and and that does slip it slip across towards the end of the film. But his crit but but his critics. I, I managed to get one critic on on camera. It, one's not enough, to be honest, to, to, to give that balance. But um, his his friends, for example, took a long time to warm to me. They they were very skeptical and very suspicious of my intentions because this is a man who who all his life had been uh, not well all his all his sort of later life had been ridiculed and criticised, and uh, his 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 friends, you know, would would defend him now and again. And Father Martin, I know, would would would. Would, would would tell him not to do that, and and it was frustrating for him to see his friends defend him, and you know when he was alive. But his his friends took a long time to warm to me. But once once they warmed up to me and realised actually what well, I was actually coming into the country, I, I was I was serious about this. Uh, we have we finally have some funding to get over to make this. Then then they started to really open up to me. And but they, yeah, initially they were very careful for obvious reasons. They want they wanted to protect uh, their friend's legacy in a sense. When you were starting to make the documentary, and especially dealing with such a strong and deep topic such as exorcism and possessions, what yeah. were what were your initial feelings? Um, during the five years of making the film, yes, I, I actually became more skeptical. Um, I, I I would sit through eighty hours of exorcism exorcism footage from the nineties through to you know even earlier, and and during my research and. Um, I, I, I became skeptical is not the uh, skeptical is not the right word. I, I became more careful in the sense of what I believed as soon as I saw it. You know, a lot of it is a lot of it. A lot of it is being. You know, I think for me, if I was in the room with these people rather than watching it cold uh, via VHS tape or whatever it was, and if I was in there and experiencing it, then I might have a different, you know, a, a different opinion, but. It actually made me a lot more skeptical of what I was, and careful of what I was seeing, and and the power of suggestion, and and really that, that fine line between mental health and other and other conditions, and and demonic possession, and and with my trip to Rome, Rome really um, opened my eyes to a lot of a lot of a um, lot of issues and a lot of questions that I had answered a lot of questions that I had was was the fact that these were Catholic priest exorcists in Rome who were telling me that. You know, it's it's not what you've seen in the movies. It, it's it's quite a mundane process. It's it's very 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 rare, and um, but there are you know there are possessions and the church does get involved. But but you know it's very it's, it's very very rare. And and um, I, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a quote from the film where Father McNamara says that his his friend the exorcist, an exorcist was telling him that in 20 years of service he's only seen one manifestation. And that was of a young girl levitating from off the floor, and that was just one. That's one in one, one manifestation in twenty years of being exorcist. He, he, that's what he. That, that's what he witnessed. So, uh, manifestations were extremely rare as well. So, I think. I think over the last 30, 40 years, audiences have just been. You know, they've they've just watched countless TV and film um, content, which is all sensational, and. Um, and not and, and not real and and for me as a documentary maker i could have easily gone down the um the sensational route and done some incredible sensational reconstructions and all this malarkey but at the end of the day you know you I, i'm in that fine line between selling entertainment and selling authenticity and it's for me i had to find that middle ground of of i have to keep it entertaining because people will start nodding off 
And but I also have to keep that authenticity because I'm making a documentary, you know. So, easy, I mean, feature film, easy. You know, I could I could, I, I could write for feature film, you know, feature film ideas just based on the research that I've done. But this was factual, and I kept on looking at myself in the mirror every morning, slap myself in the face and go, Marty, you're making a documentary here. Stop getting sensational with it. Stop getting over the, stop getting over the top. This these are real people who are who are suffering and very rare cases, this is something that science can't explain. So yeah, I just had to keep really grounded. I was the half half the crew were skeptics, half the crew were believers. So it was a nice mix of stuff that we were we, we were we were dealing with on the set camera problems and issues on the set i was having problems at home i was being visited by by something at home and the, my dogs were going you know ballistic and you know it's just yeah just yeah i was i was i was dealing with stuff at home where i was trying to just keep a really level head about it and just get on with it and i think that's the military my, my, my former military um mind is just you know you've got an objective <laughs> you're making a film with somebody else's money here you know stay serious don't get carried away here and deliver what you've promised to deliver so um yeah it was just it for me it, it, I, I just i got i just became more careful with the subject matter and and respect and, and, and respectful as well i was very respectful of of what i was li- listening to reading watching and um talking uh, and, and in discussion as well so yeah it, it, it actually made me, it made me it made me more skeptical so you had mentioned uh that you were experiencing things in uh um... yeah well, making this documentary. Yeah, yeah. I was, what I was what visit- kind of things? Yeah, I just I was visited by um, by by it was um, a, a small child who never I never saw I never saw the child. It was a, a young girl, but I would hear. I, I mean, I I have two daughters and a son. And the son wasn't born at the time, but my my my, my two daughters in the house as well but it was it, it, situations where i was in a room and i could hear i could hear a, a young girl crying and i would automatically think it was my daughter or one of my daughters and i would shout out you know katie are you okay you know why are you crying and she'd you know she'd answer me from downstairs and say you know i'm fine dad what's the matter and it was literally coming you know coming next door to where i was so stuff like that which was you know it, some people could say, "Oh, it must have been a you know a cat outside or you know whatever." So, I I I, I dismissed that and, and carried on, and, and and then I started to hear the the young girl running across the landing at home when I was locking up the house, and um, what there was one instance that there was a particular corner of the of of the living room at, at home where just the, the dog Tom the Tom I've got a Labrador dog, um, I've got two labs now, but uh, it was only one at the time, and Th- Thomas was just. He just he just saw something in this corner every, every, most nights, and there was one particular night where he was just barking at this, something in the something in the corner of the room, and uh, he just turned to me, just came over to me, pinned me down on the on the couch, and basically defended me. He he was in a protective stance, of he pinned me pinned me to the to the couch, and turned and uh, turned to this aggressive aggressive whatever it was force in the room and 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 was in a protective stance and and that's 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 where I was you know this is you know this is getting quite serious now, and um, I would also have uh, have images of, of of a woman hanging from the landing of the living room as well, and um, sorry the wrong I'll go back um, I, I used to have visions of really quick flash visions of, of, a, of a woman hanging from the landing at home and um, we have a quite a large landing at home and and it was it was I just kept this to myself and it was only a few weeks later where my wife actually turned around and and, and in bed one night and said uh, my uh, I'm, I'm having some strange visions of myself hanging from the landing at home and, and then I was like oh my word I need to, I need to I need to discuss this with my wife here. This is uh, this is quite serious stuff. So we, you know, to cut long story short, you know, there's stuff like that which 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 uh, uh, was, was affecting me. But for me, it was just I don't know what it was. It it just it just it just drove me to to complete complete the project and uh, and, and and to get to the finish line in a sense. And but yeah, you could have got carried away with it. And and and, and, and that sort of uh, temperament and 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 and. Um, uh, personality where you just you know it it is quite creepy but you, again going back to my military background it, you've got an objective <laughs> you've got to deliver no matter what is going on <laughs> you've got you've got to deliver what you promised and um, and, and and put 100 percent into it so yeah so also on set as well when we were uh particularly when we were in connecticut um when we were filming uh, a lot of the live action stuff the we were facing a lot of um or dealing with a lot of 
camera problems where the cameras just weren't turning on at all. You know, it, okay, it was cold, but you know, we had batteries and, and the cameras are used to a lot more, you know, lower temperatures, et cetera. And, and it was actually Ralph Sarchi who, who was with us in the team and he actually started to start, start to tape uh, medallions and, and rosary beads to the kit. And next minute the kit just came back to life again. It was, it was just like, wow. But obviously a lot of the skeptics in the team were like, oh, that's just a, that's a fluke or, you know, that, that's just, you know, they did make some sort of excuse up, but uh, you know, uh, Ralph, Ralph was very serious and, and, and he, and he, and he, yeah, and he, 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 he splashed the cars with holy water and, you know, he, he was, you know, I, I'm sure you, you knew who Ralph Sarchi is and he's quite an intense guy. So he, uh, you know, he was very protective of us and, 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 you know, I, I, I am a believer. I am a believer. But um, the, the film, the, the actual the actual process of making the film actually made me more careful and, and, and actually more skeptical, if that makes sense. Well, I mean, in, you're, you're speaking about your dogs, and in here in the studio, we, we, we have a big room that we sit in, and usually it's not uncommon for uh, a couple of the other uh, members yeah. that help out here at the Knights Pub to bring their, their dogs, and they just kind of yeah, hang yeah. out outside the door. Ever yeah. since we started talking about this, uh, one of them yeah. went out there to check. The that's what you've been hearing in the background. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah. Um, they they went into the to the next room, uh, kind of a kitchenette that we have, and yeah. the dogs have just been going bizarre, crazy. So yeah, yeah. yeah well, 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 welcome to my world. <laughs> <laughs> now, not with only you, and I know we're we're coming up on our time, but. Um, yeah. Did other people who helped with the documentary did they have uh, any kind of odd experiences such as you? No, no, it, uh, no. Just it, it just ganged up on me, really. <laughs> wow, that's incredible. I, <laughs> I was the writer director or co writer director, so I was. Uh, um, well, to be fair, um, no, nobody's told me anything uh, by this stage. So um, no, I, I don't think anything. Uh, no, I'm not sure, but it was. I think it was all directed at me. Um, I'm, I'm not sure what the the the, the incentive was, but um, maybe, maybe to deter or to distract, or I'm not sure what it was. But um, it was, yeah, it, it was getting a little bit hairy at, at some stages. Now, uh, the topic of demons and demonology and possession is nothing really new, but it's something that's been brought to the limelight uh, re- really recently. And um, but. A lot in in a lot of society, uh, different societal circles, it's still kind of it's a controversial topic that people don't want to talk about, or um, yeah. it, you know, it bothers them. You know, what are your thoughts and feelings? Um, you know, if somebody approaches you and they start talking about this, I mean, um, how how's that looked upon? How are you looked upon, uh, especially after making this documentary? Well, I, I actually, that, that, that's a good question because I'm actually. After making hostage to the devil, I was like, you know what? Um, I, I need a bit of a break from this uh, from from this scene. But obviously, when the, as the film was released, I was on radio shows and you know and and, 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 and uh, telephone interviews, etc. So I, I couldn't really I couldn't really escape it. But um, I'm actually looking at um, something called um, oppression, demonic oppression. So I'm actually um, looking at re- I'm actually in the research phase of a project about demonic oppression as well which is the which which is the the initial sort of the initial stages of possession in a sense so it's the you know um so that, that that's my that's my next project i haven't told the wife yet so hopefully she doesn't listen to this <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> so yeah so um obviously uh I made, I made a lot of good friends from the the making of hostage of the devil like so jimmy petanito who's mr haunted and ralph sarchi who uh, he, he's a he's a great guy and um um, we're actually we're, we're, three of us are in talks to actually um, to, to to start developing a project on uh, demonic oppression, which you know which which can be experienced in many ways. You know, physical ailments, ailments, spiritual deadness, emotional upheaval, financial difficulties. You name it. There's a big long list. Which you know, people who it, it's the initial stages of a of a of a possession, etc. So um, you know, it's 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 the it's the spiritual forces that are just the sin, etc. So it's 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 very early stages, but I'm ex- I'm excited. I didn't think I would be going back this quickly into the subject again, but um, yeah, I think for me, it's about being authentic as possible, uh, not being sensational, which everyone sort of falls into that trap of of creating sensational content and um, introducing real people with real problems. And I think one of the one of the criticisms from Hostage to the Devil was, you know, why didn't you in- interview somebody who was, you know you know, possessed or, or felt they were possessed. And, you know, so we're actually going on this next project. We're actually going a little bit more contemporary with it and, and, and bringing in contemporary cases, uh, which Ralph's involved with and Jimmy as well. And also the, uh, the Lorraine Warren as well, the Warren family as well have opened the doors to me as well. So um, it was obviously Father Martin was a big, um, 
big inspiration and you know it's a particularly to Ed and Lorraine Warren as well so um yeah so it's it's exciting it's, it's pretty exciting it's very early doors but um I'm, I'm looking that's what that's my I'd say one of my um three or four projects that I'm developing at the moment so yeah pretty excited well incredible Marty I tell you what I know your time is valuable and I know you have you have to get going here soon um in the meantime, if someone was to have questions or wanted to reach out to you, how would they how would they get a hold of you? Right, good, good question. <laughs> <laughs> right, um, I'll split it, I'll split that answer into two parts. So, if you wanted to speak to me directly, which is not a problem, you can get me on uh, my Gmail, which is Marty Stork S T A L K at gmail dot com. If you are also interested in this um, next project of mine, which looks at demonic op- oppression, not possession, but demonic oppression, you can get us. Um, you can get me, the team, and I on oppressed at hostage to the devil dot com. So that's that's oppressed, oppressed at hostage to the devil dot com, and then and you can speak to the team or myself through there. But you can also speak to me directly as well. I'm happy to answer any um, any questions as well. Um, don't. By the way, I, you know I don't want people. I, I, you know, email me going, did he really have the affair? I don't, I don't, I don't want those types of questions. Because <laughs> <laughs> so there's only three people who really know that quite, uh, know the answer to that, which is, uh, you know, the, 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 the long gone by now. But uh, no, as long as the questions are, you know, <laughs> pretty, you know, const- uh, constructive questions or constructive feedback, etc. So. Well, Marty, I just wanted to say once again, thank you for stopping by the Knights Pub. Uh, we wish you nothing but the best of luck on your next uh, venture with demonic oppression, and and please feel free to reach out to us when um, you know you get that completed, and uh, you know want to come yeah. on. No, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks for having me on as well. I can speak, I can speak for hours about the man, you know, but um, I'm, uh, yeah, uh, your listeners don't want to be listening to me for three hours, so <laughs> I'm away. <laughs> All righty, Marty. Well, thank you very much. Uh, safe travels, and uh, please keep yeah. in touch. Will do, mate. All right, thank you. Good night. Good night, mate. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, I just wanted to say this is uh, what a what a, a treat to speak with Marty Stalker. And, um, you know, off the air, uh, before we came on, we were talking about, um, you know, he was in with the, uh, you know, the Royal, the Royal Marines. I mean, he was infantry um, and, you know, s- served in Iraq. And we were, we were discussing some, um, you know, similarities and how, you know, I'm, you know, also was serving in Iraq and, uh, you know, brother Stan's Gulf war and, um, what, what, what a treat to speak with him this evening. Now, I don't know if you've heard in the background and, you know, thank goodness that it wasn't too disruptive, but when we was talking, especially when Marty was talking about some of the weird things that was going on, the dogs here at the studio, what nuts, usually we have no issues with them. Um, you know, they usually hang outside of the studio while recording. I mean, to be honest with you, somebody could break in and wipe and just steal everything outside the studio and those dogs would not move at all. However, once we start speaking about this type of subject and it's not uncommon. And as Marty was explaining all the weird things that happened to him and you know, the dogs started going, going just absolutely crazy. But my friends, I just want to say thank you for joining us tonight. I mean, it this was a really good show. Um, too bad that, um, you know, Marty couldn't stay on a little bit longer. But, you know, he has things to do. He's actually um, he's actually working on some projects here in the States. Um, you know, it comes in and out of the States quite a bit. So we just wanted to say thank you, Marty. If you're listening uh, to this or even in a brief broadcast, just want to say thank you. Uh, you know, very polite, very professional gentleman. And we just wanted to say th- thank you. And please keep us in in mind um, when you complete your other projects. We'd love to have you back. Well, my friends, we're almost about time to get out of here. Uh, Before we go, though, I just want to remind you of our upcoming interview next weekend, um, or actually on the 24th, uh, February 24th, uh, with um, Marie Jones, uh, author of Demons, the Devil, and Fallen Angels. I'm looking forward to speaking with her. Um, If you guys have any questions... Um, you know, you want to reach out to us or anything, don't, please don't hesitate to contact us at info at the nights And, um, you know, we'll, uh, we, we monitor that email quite often. So we would be more than happy to, uh, respond. Don't forget to check us out on iTunes, Spreaker, SoundCloud, YouTube, and Podomatic. Um, usually when this show is usually up within a few hours, uh, after its initial recording and, um, you know, we just look, we, we love doing these. I mean, um, 
I mean, this is just, uh, we love reaching out and speaking with, um, you know, our, our special guests that come on in which reminds me, and, and I've mentioned this several times on shows, the authors and the guests that we have on, they do so out of the kindness of their heart. Just like Marty Stalker um, from Ireland, I mean, took, you know, he's here on business, took out the time to come on the show to speak briefly about, it, about you know, the life of Malachi Martin. And if you have not checked out... Uh, hostage to the devil please go to netflix and watch it it's one of those documentaries where you'll watch over and over and over again and each time you do um and this just lets you know how well it was put together uh each time you do you'll have questions and that's okay because um i mean marty did a really good job putting that documentary together and as i mentioned father malachi martin was something uh, myself and Brother Stan uh, came upon, came across when we were listening to Art Bell uh, way back in the day when Father Malachi Martin was alive and used to come on. So, I mean, we were, and then, you know, finding out that somebody actually did a documentary on it. I mean, it's just incredible. And it's even incredible we got to speak with Marty. So, uh, guys, all I'm asking is that you stop by his website, uh, you know, pay for or watch the, the documentary. It supports him. And in doing so, it helps support us because they want to come on and then uh, talk about this stuff. So, um, guys, just wanted to say once again, thank you for joining us tonight. And, uh, you know, we look forward to speaking again. But unfortunately, our time has come. But in the, until the meantime, but in the meantime, let's <laughs> let's do that even a little bit better. In the meantime, my friends, take care of one another, love one another, and look out for one another, and take care of one another, and pray for one another, and don't stop praying. And remember, every one of you matter. Your life is very important, and don't be afraid to ask for help. And until the next time, my friends, stay well, keep your heads up, and stay positive. And we'll see you the next time, down at the pub.